So what's up guys, it's time to study the CSTR in parallel arrangement. We've seen this series one, actually we've seen them two times, the first time in chapter two, and we've seen it in the previous video, that was chapter four. Of course we added extra information here, uh, the damn color number, first order and second order reactions, and this one were more like general problems in CSTRs. And uh, now is the turn or the time to analyze parallel arrangements. Suppose we got n CSTRs, so many CSTRs, at least two of course, but let's say many CSTRs. They have the same size, same volume, the same temperature of operation, the same K or constant rate, and they are arranged in parallel. What does that mean? You have one flow, let's say 90, and then suddenly you get into three pipes which have the same size, same, same let's say, uh, friction factor, etc. Uh, eventually you get 30 here, 30 here, and 30 right here. So what you're going to analyze is that actually this here is the same reactor as this one here, and this here. Why? Because we're telling you that essentially the temperature is the same, the volume is the same, and the constant is the same, and they have the same reaction, so that's why it's boring, guys, or at least I was telling you that this is the same reactor, and this is the same reactor, and this is the same reactor, so you just need to model one and multiply it by the number of reactors, and you get the final volume. So conversion will be the same for the reactors for reactor 1, 2 and 3 uh, the rate of reaction will be the same, why? because the rate of reaction is essentially K, which is the same for everyone times the concentration in case it were first order or concentration uh, to the second power in case it was second or essentially just K if it was to the zero power of course now you need n tanks or n reactors to get the total volume, that's obvious. So you want to calculate the total volume of the system, not only of the reactor. So how can you get that? Well, that's easy. You know the volume of each tank and you just need to count the number of tanks you used and multiply it and you get the total volume of the system. The same for the flow, the total flow. You got the initial or the yeah the flow entering the reactor, and you know how many of these do you have? So you know they are the same. So if you have I don't know let's say ten reactors, and you know each reactor has two moles per second, so two times ten will give you twenty moles per second. That will be your total flow rate. Once again, it's like having three identical reactors, or I mean three in this case, but I mean n identical reactors. Same volumes, same volumetric flows, same flow rates, same constant. So, yeah, I'm just telling you this once again. It's like having three times that reactor volume, or three times that flow rate volume. So look here, you will add this, and this, and this, but you know they are the same, so it's three times that flow rate. Or not three, but n number. Three is the example, but I'm calling you n is the number of reactors. The same with the volume. You got the volume of one tank, volume of second tank, volume of third tank. You will know that this is the same volume, so it's three times that volume. And that's why I'm telling you once again, it's boring. You will get this, let's say, master equation will be the volume of that reactor divided by that number of reactors. Uh, equals the volumetric flow rate at the inlet of that small reactor divided by the number of reactors and you have this of course the conversion which is the same for every reactor and the conversion of this one here so at the end you will have the same conversion even though you mix them you will find out that you have the same reaction uh, the same conversion so we proved that the parallel arrangement will be the same if we will actually have one large reactor of that volume. So why? Because it's like, let's say, 
let's treat this like a black box and you have your flow rate, total flow rate, and you have your final conversion. The only thing that changes is the total volume. And it does not change, actually it's three times the small tags. So even though you calculate each one and you divide one third of the flow, one third of the flow, one third of the flow, you have the same reaction, let's say rate of reaction equals KCA, and you calculate the volumes, you will find out that they are one third of the total volume and times three because there are three reactors you will get the total volume so I'm not going to do any exercise of this it's so easy and I think yeah we're almost done here this is the case for four reactors four 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 these volumes are the same and these flow rates are the same and actually if you add them you will get this flow rate here and if you add these volumes you will get this volume here and yeah I told you I was not going to do the exercise uh, this is for uh, another exercise but I want you to let you know that I do the examples on the book in the Scott uh, Fowler book we have the textbook at the end of this uh, chapter and yeah, the thing here is that I'm going to solve all the problems on the back of this chapter 4 in that book. And I also included some extra problems like examples, exercise, some problems I got in my notebook, in class, or anything that might help you. And I think it's interesting. I'm going to include it here. So you really want to practice those theory problems or those actual problems go and check out my webpage here go to courses reactor engineering go to the solver problem section I have a theory section which is essentially these videos and then I have by separate my solver problem section which are videos in which I solve the problems and explain you everything in plain English and go to this chapter here so yeah that was everything guys for section 3 we are done with the CSTR next is the plug flow reactor in isothermal design so good luck with that uh, see you in the next video What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.